Hello, good day everyone. Uh, my name is Professor Bulado. I will be your professor for GE9, History 141, or History 141. GE9 is for the new curriculum and uh, History 141 for the old curriculum. Now, I know this time might be difficult for everyone because of the pandemic. And uh, doing online class is quite a challenge for both ends, from my end and from your end also. Uh, but I hope we can make ends meet and, uh, you know, just be able to cope up with the challenges that we face right now. Uh, this is an orientation video for the class. I decided to record this so that you'll be able to view it, especially for those who cannot join the Zoom meeting or for those who have slow connection. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to find a stronger connection and be able to view this video uh, as this is very important. Uh, the orientation is also important because I'll give you a background of what to expect and uh, the topics for uh, this class. Now, this class is uh, primarily all about Rizal. You already know about our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, and you've heard about him since your elementary days. And... Uh, you know, even when you're already in college, you still have to take a course on Rizal, mostly because of uh, the law that requires students to take up a course on Rizal. College students, even foreigners, are required to take up a course on Rizal if they decide to study here in the Philippines. Now, the first lesson that we'll have, probably I'll record a video of it probably by next week or next next week, depending on the uh, depending on the time and whether you were able to view this video. You have to view this video first before we can proceed to the next, okay? So, the first lesson, maybe by next week, we can have a discussion on results times in the 19th century. And then that will be followed by Rizal's family, uh, more on his childhood years, etc., etc. But for now, let me give you a brief background or orientation on the subject itself. Now, the reason why all of us are here, the reason why I am teaching this subject, and the reason why you are learning is... Because there is a certain law that requires everyone, every student, every college student to take up a course on Rizal. Now, some of you might ask, why, why do we have to study his life? Why do we need to know more about this national hero? Some of you might even ask, why do we consider Rizal a national hero? Why don't we consider some other people like Andres Bonifacio, Antonio Luna, Manny Pacquiao, uh, who else you'd probably think of, Lapu-Lapu. Maybe some of you might think Duterte, or I don't know. But some of you might think, why Rizal? Some of you might question the idea, why do we see Rizal as our national hero? What makes him different from the others? If we were in a classroom right now, I'd be asking you to answer that question, but uh, we're not. So let me answer that question. Well, it would take us the whole semester to answer the question. If I answer the question right now, it would be too short. And it would just be considered as the tip of the iceberg, if you will. But... One thing is for sure, out of the many he heroes in Philippine history, Rizal made or had the greatest impact. 
you might know him by right you know through his writings the no limit tangere the el filibusterismo the morga etc but rizal in general is not only a writer but he also influenced a lot of minds he according to some historians awakened the minds of the filipino people and you know we need that right now we need someone who would awaken the minds of the filipinos at present given the corruption the rampant graft and corruption happening right now in the country nevertheless uh rizal today is considered as a national hero but you have to remember there is no law that would state or mandate us to believe that rizal indeed is the national hero So why do we consider him as such? I leave that up to you. Why since elementary why were we taught that Rizal is a national hero? We remember about the national national tree, national fish, national fruit, national bird, national 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 blah blah blah. But why did our teachers before say that Rizal is our national hero when there is no law that would state that he is our national hero well there are a lot of factors and i will give that to you as an assignment by the end of this orientation i'd like you to answer that question why do we consider Rizal as our national hero I'll give more instructions on that later on. But be that as it may, uh even if there is no law that would state that Rizal is a national hero, there is a law however that mandates students students to take up a course on Rizal. And that is the RA 1425. or what we now know as the Rizal law the person responsible for making that law is or was Claro M Recto now Claro M Recto was a senator in the 1950s he was a he was a nationalist and he had a deep admiration for Rizal. And that's the reason why he made a bill that would later on become a law and he made that law requiring students to study the life and works of Dr. Rosa Rizal. That was in the 1950s. So even your parents or grandparents who studied in college most likely took up a course on Rizal. Definitely took up a course on Rizal. So it was Senator Claro M. Recto. But it was a difficult, it was a difficult uh, task. It was very challenging for Recto to uh, pass that bill as there were some opposition to the bill. Some of you might ask, who would in their right mind oppose the passage of the bill well there were people who did there were congressmen who did there were senators who did oppose to the passage of the bill these people who opposed <coughs> were influenced by the roman catholic church the roman catholic church did not want students to study the life and works of Rizal simply because they were afraid that if students might read about the Noli Metangere and the El Filibusterismo that they might see the priests in a bad image because if you remember if you read the Noli and the El Fili Rizal portrayed the priests in a negative light 
Padre Damaso was portrayed as the antagonist, the father of Maria Clara. A very bad reputation. Because if you're a priest, you should not have any offsprings. So, Padre Damaso, Padre Salvi, etc., and the other priests were portrayed in a negative light. And the church did not want the students to know about this. They were afraid. Because they thought that if students learn about this, they might look at the church as an, you know, a, a, a bad institution, so to speak. So what happened next? Well, there was a debate in Congress and then later on in the Senate. There was almost a fist fight even. Hapit nagsumbagay ang mga congressmen because of the heated nature of the debate. And then, the church said, or threatened recto, the church threatened recto, and, and they, <clears throat> they basically told recto, if you decide to pursue the passage of the bill, then we will close our schools. Close. X. Close. Close. But then recto gave a very witty reply. And Recto said, okay, if you close the schools, then that's fine. If you close the schools, then we will turn the Catholic schools into state colleges and universities. Maropod. So, the church really could not do anything about it. Because if they decide to close it, they lose, you know, they lose students, they lose money, and then they just, the students will just be, you know, they'll just continue with their education as the school would then be changed into a state college or state university like Norsu. So, what happened next was that, yeah, to make the long story short, Recto eventually was successful in passing the bill and making it into a law. And that's why you are here right now. That's why I'm here teaching you right now. So, <clears throat> yeah, if, you, if you're wondering why you are here, it's because of Senator Claro M. Recto. He is the reason why students are taking up a course on Rizal, together with the help of uh, former president Jose P. Laurel, by the way, it's a very good president. So that's why you are here. That's why we are studying the life and works of Rizal. So we study the life of Rizal in order to know why he became the national hero. But we also have to answer the question how he became the national hero. It's not enough for us to say that he became the national hero because he wrote the Noli Metangere, the El Filibusterismo. It's not enough. That's not enough. But there are reasons. And this it will take us the whole semester through online classes and modular, les modular lessons. And through that, we can, you know, hopefully better understand why Rizal is our national hero. So, yeah, remember the bill, remember the law, RA 1425, the Rizal law. And that's why today many of us believe that Rizal is our national hero. But you have to remember again, there is no law that would state that Rizal is our national hero. Okay? So, I will not make this longer. Uh, this is, we're already on a almost 15 minute mark. But, I'll give you an assignment to work on and probably do some online research. Uh, I will post an update later on as to how you will submit the assignment. 
maybe we can have that on uh, a Google Classroom or you can send it uh, via email or whatnot or through Google Drive. Just keep posted. Anyway, I will not be asking you to submit the assignment right away. Maybe you can submit the assignment by next week, Monday. I'll give you enough time. So, my first assignment for the class is to try to write an essay. Huh? Write an essay on Rizal. Specifically on the question, do you think Rizal is our national hero? If you answer yes, then you explain. Why do you think that Rizal is our national hero? If your answer is no, then you explain. Why don't you think that Rizal is our national hero? Okay? And then, who do you think should be our national hero if you think that Rizal is not our national hero? So again, the question is, do you think that Rizal is or should be our national hero? If yes, you explain why. If no, explain why not. And who do you think should be our national hero? You can probably write in two paragraphs, minimum two paragraphs. You... You encode that, and then you just send a soft copy via email. Uh, anyway, email or Facebook, I will try to uh, uh, figure out a way that would be easier for you to submit your assignments. So keep posted for the update, but for now, just make your assignment, okay? And then worry about the, let me worry about how you're going to send it. Uh, let me figure it out first. Maybe we can have it through Facebook or in, in our Facebook group. Much easier. But we'll see. I'll try to find a, an easier way for you to submit your assignment without your classmates seeing your answers. So that's it. Uh, hopefully by next week, I can record my next lecture on uh, Rizal. We will now delve on the economic developments and the political developments during results time so if you want you know to read in advance then i would advise you to read on the economic and political developments that transpired during the 19th century okay so thanks for watching and uh, i will see you next week thank you